Father, we thank you for the prayers that have been prayed in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And God, we trust you and we trust your word. We know that before a jot or a tittle of your word fail, heaven and hell will pass away. Thank you for being the great I am. Thank you for being our awesome God. Thank you for being the God who hears and the God who helps. Thank you, Father, that we walk in kingdom authority that has been given unto us in the word of God, by your son, Jesus Christ. And we honor you, we bless you, we magnify you, we praise you, we exalt you. In Jesus' name, we say it is so. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'd like to welcome you all to Transform 60, Refreshing Lives Church Weeknight Bible Study. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to also say again, bless you, bless you. Thank you for those that are on Facebook and for those that are on the prayer line. And again, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I trust God that you have had a wonderful Mother's Day um, and that you just felt the love and the blessings and the peace of God, not just from your family, but from others as well. All right, so we're we're about to get started. I just need to make a quick adjustment very quickly. Uh, let's turn this back. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to get started in our Transform 60 Bible study tonight. And uh, you know, last week we started a new series entitled Elevation, Elevation. And we focused on elevating our triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We came out of uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and our primary verse was verse number seven that tells us that we have this treasure in earth and vessels, that the excellency of power may be of God and not of us. And so we began to talk about that. And one of the things that I mentioned to you is that the world will have evidence of our love for God or God's power operating in our life by the way we live, by the way we love one another, and by our lifestyle. So we all individually must ask our own selves a question in examining our lives. Does my lifestyle line up with the word of God? Then we defined elevation, and I'm going to repeat that definition for you. It is the height to which something or someone rises based on the creator and or the navigation of it. Now, what I won't do is I won't expound upon that definition because we've got a lot to cover tonight. Um, but I will tell you that you can go to our website, uh, refreshinglives.org, and listen to last week's teaching if you weren't um, here with us and then it will bring you up to where we are now. So tonight we're going to focus on elevating our prayer life. Elevating our prayer life. Let us pray. Father, we honor you, we magnify you, and we give you glory. I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, that you do the calling, you do the anointing, you do the set aside. It is you, Father God, that calls us to operate within the gifts you've given unto us by your spirit. I thank you for those that are watching and I declare your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus. I declare that they have an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. I declare, Father, that the word we hear tonight will take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And it's because of the word and the word only, our lives will never, ever, never, ever, ever be the same again. I thank you that my tongue is as a pen of a ready writer speaking the oracles of God, nothing added and nothing taken away. God, I thank you that I'm hidden behind the cross. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And you know, something that we say on Sundays, I'd like to uh, say it today as well, and I will use my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. 
I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. do. I'm a believer believer and not a doubter. doubter. I'm a doer doer. and not just a hearer. hearer. And it's because of the word of God God that I will never ever ever be the same same again. again. Faith comes by hearing hearing and hearing by by the word of God. Amen. 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 Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. So uh, in this series of Elevation, tonight we're going to focus on elevating our prayer life, elevating our prayer life. And we're going to start by going to three uh, scriptures, the first one being in James, the fifth chapter. Now, I will say to you, uh, I'm going to probably read just a couple of verses from these uh, scriptures to start with. But if you would just bear with me, I will go back and expound upon it. Uh, so that you will have clarity and understanding. Amen. Now, James, the the fifth chapter, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read verses 12 through 16. And it says, But above all things, my brothers, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. Uh, Let your yea be yea and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Verse number 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. Part C of that, which is the one I want to us to uh, home in on, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, of course, we know that this is not referring to gender, but it's referring to humankind. Now, I also want to uh, use as a foundational scripture, Luke, the 18th chapter, Luke, the 18th chapter. And uh, for this one, I'm actually just for now going to read the, the first verse, Luke 18, Luke 18 um, and verse number one. And it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Boy, that's powerful. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Powerful eight words right there. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Bless the Lord. And the last one I want to go to with emphasis on just one verse for now. I know that, you know, everything should be... um, Uh, expound upon and I promise you I will come back and do that but I do want to share Galatians 5 25 that says if which means it's contingent now if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit if if we live in the spirit if we live in the spirit then let us also walk in the spirit. So we're talking about elevating our prayer life. Now, in Luke, the 18th chapter, um, I want to be able to bring all this together for you before I begin to get into um, some, some, some specifics as it relates to elevating our prayer life. In Luke, the 18th chapter, here it is that the Lord is given a parable and he says, men ought to always pray. And then he begins to give the parable of a widow woman who was um, being bothered, if you will. She was being, um, her adversary was coming against her. And she went to a judge. The judge she went to did not have a relationship with God and did not uh, care about man. In other words, this judge was not moved by God, nor was he moved by man. But he made a decision. He made a decision that, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and do what this lady is asking me to do because if not, she's going to keep right on bugging me. 
And this came as a result of prayer. Now remember, verse 1 said, men ought to always pray. So then Jesus begins to share this parable, which shows the results of what this woman got as a result of praying. These are the results she got. She got that man to do what under normal circumstances, according to him, he probably wouldn't have done. Amen? Now, but he did not want to be troubled by her anymore. Now, that's important because the prayer that we're going to focus on tonight is persevering prayer. And that's what she did. She persevered. There are three, there are four in total um, uh, focuses of prayer that we're going to look at. But tonight, we're going to focus in on persevering prayer. But now, before we get there, I want to go over to Isaiah, the 11th chapter, because I've got to set this up. Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Now, starting uh, in verse 1 of the 11th chapter, here the scriptures is referring to Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the scripture says, then a shoot will come, and I'm reading the God's Word translation, then a shoot will come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from its roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of advice and power, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will gladly bear the fear of the Lord. Verse number three uh, B, he will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. Let me read that again. He will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. Verse 4 says, he will judge the poor justly. He will make fair decisions for the humble people on earth. He will strike the earth. Talking about Jesus with a rod from his mouth. He will kill the wicked with the breath from his lips. Justice will be the belt around his waist. Faithfulness will be the belt around his hips. Again, going back to 3B, he will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. Now, there, there are some important things in this scripture that I want to, to bring to your attention. Number one, I said to you, it's referring to Christ. Number two, and the spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon him. But remember, it's talking about Jesus. And I want you to also remember that we are joint heirs with him. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So if the spirit of wisdom is going to rest on him, then the spirit of wisdom should be resting on us. If the spirit of understanding is going to be on him, then understanding should be upon us. If the spirit of advice and power is going to be upon him, then it also should be upon us. The spirit of knowledge and having the reverence for the Lord on him, it should also be upon us. But I just got to go back for a minute and highlight again. He said 3B. He will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. Why is that so important? Let me tell you why that's important. But before I tell you why that's important, I want to also mention to you John 14, 12, where the word of God says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, Jesus is talking, the works that I do, he will do also. The Lord's talking to us. What Jesus has done we are to do. Then he says, and greater works than these will he do. Greater works will we do. Because I go to my father and whatever you ask in my name, Jesus said, that I will do. That the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything, Jesus said, anything in my name, anything in my name, I will do it. Now, Going back to Isaiah 11, 3, you know, I believe in repeating over and over because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Isaiah 11, 3b, he will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. This is what I want to bring to your attention. As people who are to always pray, that's what the scripture says, and that the effectual fervor 
fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We're in a season where our prayers should not be guided by what we see and what we hear. Watch this. There is another realm we need to go into. What we see is I'm seeing something. Now, 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 it's not that that's totally wrong. Hear me. But as we mature in the Lord, we need to be going into another realm of prayer. It's like, um, oh, well, the word talks about the sense, you know, moving off of the milk and getting into the, to the meat, uh, uh, be growing and maturing in the word of God. So when we pray, uh, my prayers should not always be driven by what I see and what I hear. Can I help you? Because it said here, he was not going to make any judgment by his eyes or make a decision by what his ears hear. In other words, when we pray, our prayer should come from a place of us having been in the presence of God. Me being in the presence of God, I don't have to wait now until I hear something on the news. Me being in the presence of God, I don't have to wait now until I see something. If I will avail myself to the Spirit of God, God will show me things early on. God will speak to me about things early on. God will reveal things to me, and he will direct me by his Spirit, and he will direct you by his Spirit on what to pray and how to pray. Now watch this. Praying in the sense realm means that we're seeing it with our natural eyes. We're hearing it with our natural ears versus hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. That's something totally different from hearing what somebody said and then hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And then praying in the sense realm is, is based upon our awareness of a situation. So that comes out of head knowledge or natural knowledge, but it's certainly not coming from the realm of the Holy Spirit revealing it. You know, uh, this type of prayer has not been bad, though, because it has gotten us where we are. But we have to be like the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar, according to First Chronicles, uh, the 12th chapter, the 32nd verse, it talks about them knowing the, the timing and having an understanding of the timing and the season they were in. You know, many people refer to it as the is a car anointing, having that anointing so that you will know in your knowing what the Lord is doing. In other words, we're moving from a place of, I think I'm not sure. Wait a minute. If it's something that God wants us to know, if we uh, desire to, to, to have an understanding about what's taking place, we need to be getting into the face of God. We need to be seeking the Lord. We need to be getting into his presence. So when we talk about elevating our prayer life, I'm talking about moving out of the sense realm and deeper into the spirit realm. Now, can I help you? This is not spooky. Nothing about the Lord is spooky. This is praying and having to rest on us uh, that which rests on Jesus. Amen? So, and we saw what rests on Jesus, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, advice and power, knowledge and having a reverence for the Lord. Now, when it comes to having that Issachar anointing, you know, and it's so interesting if you go read uh, 1 Chronicles, the 12th chapter, and it's talking about all these people that David had with him. Issachar, that tribe, that group had the least amount of people. It's amazing. The least amount of people but had the greater understanding, a greater understanding of what was taking place. Why was that? How do we get that? By being in the presence of the Lord. See, many times we're looking for an entourage. It's not in the entourage. It's in the being in the presence with the Lord and being there in prayer. So there are four areas to focus in that I'm going to focus on in elevating our prayer. The first one is uh, not in the order that I'm going to teach it, but the first one I'm going to mention is the prophetic prayer, the prophetic prayer. Well, we know that um, prophecy is being able to foretell what's to come 
as a result of the Holy Spirit revealing it to you, right? It's not, you know, conjuring up or wondering or thinking. It's having that knowing that you know that you know that the Holy Spirit has revealed something to you. He's showing you the future. Um, and when you know like that, when you have the guarantee that you know that the Spirit of God has revealed it to you. It doesn't matter. It should not matter whether somebody else agrees with you or not. Because if it's from the Lord, guess what? It will manifest. Amen? The second one is somatic prayer. And when we begin to cover the somatic prayer, I will go into that in more detail because I really want to uh, be mindful of the amount of material that I want to cover tonight. The third one is the pers 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 persevering prayer. Persever I always want to say P-R-E, but it's P-E-R. Persevering prayer. And uh, that's like holding on. Listen, keep praying until you see the breakthrough. And I'm going to give you some examples of that tonight. And then the fourth one is promise prayer. And again, I will detail that when we get into it. Now, none of these, the prophetic, the uh, somatic, the persevering, or the promise are prayers that deal with the sense realm. None of them. Well, if you're going to get a word from the Lord, you got to be uh, connected with the Lord and in his spirit, in the spirit, right? And so, and the word of God says that those that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. So we're not, you know, sitting down or you're not sitting down saying, well, this is what I think it is. No, 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 no. We get into his presence, we spend time in prayer, and we're elevating out of the sense realm into another realm where we are now praying prophetically, we're praying somatically, we're praying perseveringly, and we are praying the promise. I'll add a lead behind that, you know, just to be consistent. So now, let's look at persevering prayer, persevering prayer. Let me define it, and this is not my personal definition, but this is a definition that I pulled from um, dictionary.com. It says, to persist in anything and undertaking, to maintain a purpose in spite of difficulty. Did you hear me? In spite of the difficulty, you're going to maintain a purpose in spite of difficulty, in spite of obstacles, in spite of discouragement, and we're going to continue steadfastly now right there, right there, right there is where many of us need to grow because what will happen is that uh, if we're not spending time in prayer, see, not wanting to pray and um, finding prayer a burden or cumbersome or, you know, oh, I got to do that again. That's because you're operating out of the sense realm. That comes from operating out of the sense realm. That comes from operating out of the flesh realm. You know, it, it, it's not, oh, no, 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 no. We're maturing in the, in the body of Christ. And so as a part of our uh, plan of maturity, according to, <clears throat> excuse me, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, where it talks about how the Lord has given us different uh, leaders or functions in the body of Christ uh, so that we can grow up, so that we can mature until we all come into the unity of faith. Well, guess what we need right now? We need unity. We need unity. We need prayer. We absolutely need prayer. Elevating our prayer life uh, takes us out of the sense realm of saying what the news is saying and saying what the people are saying because we've been in the presence of God. We're saying what God's saying. My God. We are echoing God. Now watch this. When it comes to the, the persevering prayer, let's go back to Luke, the 18th chapter. I told you that we would go there. We're going to go to Luke, the 18th chapter. Let me go back there again. Hallelujah. And I want to take my time on this. Now, Luke, the 18th chapter, verse number one, uh, I'm going to start there again. And it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Now, what is the spirit of the Lord saying? He's saying that this is something we should do, but it's an indication that we don't always do it. 
And then he's saying that we ought not faint. Well, what's the definition of persevering prayer? It, it, to persist in anything, in any undertaking. Be persistent. Be persistent. Keep going at it. What does the scripture say? Knock and the door, the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Keep going at it. Keep going at it. Keep going at it. You know, many times I describe how, how when the enemy, and I'm sure many of you have at, at some point in your life experienced this where you were under attack. And before you could break through, see the manifestation of the break breakthrough of that, another attack came. And before, then another attack. And then it seemed like they were coming closer and closer and closer and closer. I call that the rat attack tap, the rat attack tap, where the enemy is like, blah, 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 blah. Because what? He's trying to wear us down. He's trying to wear us down. And if we don't pray as we should, then we will faint. If we don't stay undergirded, we will faint. If we don't persevere, we will faint. If we don't declare the word of God, we will faint. We ought not to faint. Would you please put up a, uh, put that up there? We ought not to faint. We ought not to faint. Then in verse 2 it says, a saying, this is Jesus talking, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. Now listen to this. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. In other words, get my adversary off my back. Set me free from them. And he would not, in verse 4, for a while, but afterwards, so initially he rejected her request, right? And then it says, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Huh? That's the question that's being asked. So, so here's the deal. Yes, it's a parable, but look what happened. Her perseverance and not giving up caused someone who did not believe in God to honor her request. Now, that's what should be happening with us. That's what should be happening with us. Not that we're ever boasting in ourselves, not that we're ever prideful, but our confidence is in the word of God. The Lord said it. And if the Lord said it, that settles it. So what do we do in persevering prayer? We look at what the word says and we say what the word says. We keep declaring it, keep declaring it, keep declaring it, keep declaring it. We're going to reverse this thing. We're going to rat-a-tat-tat whatever that issue, whatever that obstacle, whatever that challenge, whatever that situation is. We're going to keep declaring the word of God over it until we see it coming to manifestation. We're not going to doubt. We're not going to waver because our hope and our trust and our faith is in the word of God. So what do we do? We keep saying it. We keep saying it. We keep saying it. Keep... See, here as believers, we can't get tired of declaring and decreeing the same thing. Don't ever let up until two things happen. One, you see the manifestation, or two, the Spirit of God says you can let up now. In, in many cases, he will, he will have you to stay at it until you see it. Amen? Now, in, in, in Job, the Word of God says, if we make a vow and we keep it, we can declare and decree a thing and it shall be established. Now, when we know that the word backs up what we are saying, our confidence should be that we are not concerned and operating from the sense realm where we're saying, but I don't see it. Uh-uh, that's not how we talk. We, we have elevated our prayer life. I don't care if I don't see it without my natural eye. Didn't I read in Isaiah the 11th chapter where the Lord said, it says that the Lord will not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. Why is that important? Because if you're believing God 
uh, for a report and okay for a healing report and the word is the scripture says um, whose report will you believe and the reply I will believe the report of the Lord here's why his report says that I'm healed his report says that I'm filled his report says that I'm free his report says that I have victory so then you go to the doctor and the doctor says well I see such and such and such and such okay Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. His report says I'm healed. His report says I'm filled. His report says I'm free. His report says I have victory. You go back again, and they say, well, it's still there. Uh-uh, we're not operating in the sense realm. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. His report, and listen, watch this, and you saying it out of your own mouth, but solidifies what you're believing and what you're willing to receive. It's not enough just to see it in the word, but we have to open our mouth and say what the word says. You go back again. Okay. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace is upon him, and by his stripes, I am healed. You just keep saying it. You just keep saying it. To finally, you're going to go up in there, and they're going to tell you. Well, there's been a turnaround. I don't know what happened, but I don't see what I saw. I know what happened. You know what happened. The word. The word. You opened your mouth and you declared the word and the word manifested in your life. The word manifested as God said it would. God said before a jot or a tittle of my word fails, heaven and hell will pass away. So what happened? You kept you kept pounding at that thing. You kept pounding at that thing. Using the word of God as your sledgehammer. You kept hitting it and you kept hitting it and you kept hitting it and you kept hitting it, kept hitting it until it disintegrated. Until it was eradicated. Until it was no more. Listen. There are times when you've probably operated in that realm and did not realize or give credit to, to, to operating in the word of God for having done that. You know, if, if uh, some of you have probably seen uh, a part of my testimony that uh, this past weekend, uh, our, our daughters were, were, were posting about it and, you know, how went in one time and they said one thing. And even when we went in there and they said that, the spirit of boldness came on me. The spirit of wisdom came on me. That's what, listen, back, back to the scripture, back to the scripture. The spirit of wisdom came upon me. The spirit of understanding. Here was my understanding. My understanding was don't, 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 don't fall by what they say now. Make sure your words are lining up with what God said. The spirit of power came upon me. And advice came up me, upon me. The spirit of knowledge and my reverence for the Lord. My reverence for the Lord was stronger than fear for what they were saying. That's operating, that's coming out of the sense realm. And operating based on what you know, persevering in the word. So we went in there. They said what they had to say. Now I'm not saying that fear did not try to come, but I, I but I spoke the word over that. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And when I talk about opening my mouth, listen, right there we opened our mouth. Right there while sitting in there, we we declared the scriptures. No, I'm not going to let you put something in the atmosphere about me, and that's not what God said about me. So I wasn't going to wait. Bishop wasn't going to wait until we were out of that office. Not only did we begin to declare the word of God in that office, but we prayed with the, with the God that was giving the report. And not just for us, but we began to pray and declare the word for anybody he had to see regardless who the patient was. We declared that God's healing power would hit every last one of them. We prayed that God would, would, would grant him wisdom uh, because the word of God says, if any man, not if just a saved man, if any man lack wisdom, that he would give it to us freely and he would not withhold it. Persevering prayer, persevering prayer. Would you put that up there? Persevering prayer. We must persevere in prayer. We must 
persevere in prayer. We must continue to pray what it is that we're believing God for until we see what it is that we're believing God for. We just keep saying it. We keep saying it. We keep saying it until we see it. We keep saying it. In 2019, the uh, Lord uh, gave me a prayer agenda for our church. And I gave, I gave that prayer agenda to our lead intercessor. And I said, here, this is what the Lord gave me that we're supposed to pray. Uh, pretty much for 2019, for all of 2019. Oh, boy. That's it. Persevering prayer. That's it. And uh, we took that agenda. And for the most part, we stayed in that agenda. That's it. Persevering prayer. We stayed in that agenda for most of 2019. Now, in the natural when you get into the sense realm, you would want to move away from it because your thought is, well, we don't pray that. We keep praying that. I want to pray something else. I want to pray what's on my heart. Well, here's the thing that we had to grow to understand about what's on our heart, especially, and this is for you intercessors. You know, you're at, a, you're at another church and I want to encourage you. You know, your, your, your man and or woman of God puts out a prayer agenda and, uh, but you're saying, but this is on my heart. This is what I'm supposed to pray. This is what the Lord told me to pray. Well, first of all, you know, the, the Lord, according to scriptures in Acts, he gives a vision to one. And then through there, there's a committed group of people to help bring the vision to pass. And so, uh, in that, you know, could it be that the Lord gave that to you? Yes. We're not denying that the Lord gave that to you to pray. But the reason why you can hear it so clearly while you're in corporate prayer is because that ground has been tilled. The ground has been tilled in prayer and the atmosphere is set. And so something that God may have been trying to say to you all week long, you couldn't hear when you were at home or, or you know, or at, or at work because there was so much interference, so much interference. But now you're in the atmosphere where prayers have been going up, where worshiping has been going up, where praise has been going up. And now you can hear what God is put on your heart and you're saying, man, this is what I'm supposed to pray. You are, but it may not be for that moment at that time at that place. Amen. And so don't drop the prayer agenda. When you get back on your base, then you begin to pray that which God has given to you. Amen. So in persevering prayer, watch this. You stay, you stay there. You stay there. So we stay there. There were several things that we prayed in 2019. One was we pray for growth and maturity for our church. Now, growth, interestingly enough, was not about numbers. It was about those who were there would begin to grow and mature in the word of God. We declared and decreed uh, healing was our bread and was our portion. And we spoke that and we declared that uh, not just for us at RLC, we prayed that for anybody that was connected to us and anybody we were connected to. We declared that word of God. Uh, again, we declared and decree um, that um, there was another one that we prayed for. Y'all might have to put that up there to help me out because I'm getting so excited about this word. But there were several. Th oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my Holy Spirit. We fully activated Psalm 91 and we fully activated Psalm, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 6. When we would pray, we were just fully activated, fully activated. Full. Now, nothing was really going on then, but that's how the Spirit of the Lord, the, the, those were some of the things that he'd given to me on the prayer agenda. So what happened? 2020 happened. That's what happened. And in 2020, this global pandemic happened. So we saw now the manifestation of Psalm 91, that which we fully activated in 2019 was being manifested in 2020. My God, hear me. That which we fully activated in Ephesians 6, destroying principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places and having on the whole armor of God, it was fully manifested in 2020. In 2019, when we were declaring that we would mature in the things of God and we would grow up, it had to manifest in 2020. It prepared us 
for being out of the building and being in a position to now let the word that we've heard and we've studied corporately and on our own manifest in our lives. Now here's the question. What would have happened had we not persevered in those prayers? What would have happened if we got back into the sense realm and because I'm, you know, the sense realm is I'm tired of praying that. We didn't pray that. No, 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 no. We persevere in prayer. When the Holy Spirit gives you something to pray, as I said earlier, you stay on it until you either, one, see the manifestation of the breakthrough, or two, you, he tells you to come off on it. Any other time, you just continue to declare and to decree it. It is the necessary thing. So coming out of the sense room, now, now, having prayed those prayers, and we, oh, and we declared that our city belonged to the Lord, our county belonged to the Lord, our state belonged to the Lord, and we declared the United States of America belonged to the Lord. Now, understand as an intercessor, God will give you uh, a reach, a territorial reach, I'll call that. You know, uh, even Jabaz said, enlarge my territory. There's a reach. So he knew that there were some boundaries with where he was, and he was asking God to expand it beyond where he was. Hit me. And just like God did that for Jabaz, God does that for us. But, but what we have to understand is, even as we have prayed against this global pandemic, hear me, and things have happened that we would not have wanted to happen, can we give God praise for things that did not happen that we did not want to happen? Can we give God praise that we're still here to win souls, to declare his word, to persevere, to snatch people out of hell through our prayers, to be a witness, to declare the works of the Lord? Because the word of God tells us that, look, even the earth is wanting to know who the sons of God, the sons and daughters of God are. So we ought not to faint. When things happen, we ought not to faint. When, we, when, when things happen, we begin to pray the word of God. We get into the word and we pray the word of God. Don't let up. My breakthrough came because Bishop and I prayed the word of God. And some wee hours in the morning, I would get up and I, the Holy Spirit would say, go pray, persevere. And I would come up by myself into our prayer area, our office, and declare the word of God. You can't keep speaking the word of God and God telling you to speak the word of God and it won't come to manifestation. So, so my obedience and following the instructions of the Holy Spirit brought the results that I wanted in my body. Now, we all are on different levels. And it's all according to your faith. So when God is speaking to you about you, watch this. I remind you of something that I said something, said Sunday, excuse me. We are not racing against man. We are pacing with God. We're not in the race for man. Uh, moving out of that sense realm stops you from looking at what somebody else is doing and figuring out if you should be doing it or how should you do it? No, 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 no. Our instructions come from the Lord. Our instructions come from the Lord. We listen to the, the, the Spirit of God, and we are led by the Spirit of God. Now, when we get into praying, watch this. Now, the, the, let me go back to Issachar, because I mentioned that. Uh, First Chronicles, the 12th chapter, uh, the 32nd verse, I believe it is. Uh, here's something because I, I oftentimes do this when the spirit of the Lord takes me somewhere I want to do some research I want to be like the Bereans and search out the scripture understand now uh, Mark okay hold that let me go to Mark um, the fifth chapter I, I went here Sunday uh, Mark the fifth chapter in verse one and I was sharing how Bishop Scott for the New Year's Eve service gave us a prophetic word and he told us up front that's what he was going to do. And then 
he reminded me and he told us in that in that uh, that night that after I bring this word there is going to be another prophetic word that you will hear and so don't you know don't shut down here there's more to be to be heard from the Lord now he took us to mark uh, the fourth chapter, and he went over to verse number uh, one, and this is where he stopped in verse number one, and it said, and they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the uh, Gadarens, Gadarens, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but anyway, that word Gadaren means that there will be a reward at the end. We were talking about the crossover. There will be a reward at the end. Now, I want to take you to the sons of Issachar. So we know when we cross over, there's a reward. Okay? So that's another reason we ought not to faint. We just pray. We declare the word of God. But then in Issachar, First Chronicles 12.32, the name Issachar means there is a recompense. There is a recompense. There's going to be a recompense. For anything that you went through in this season, listen, if you will trust and believe God, there will be a recompense for it. There will be a recompense. And so we don't have to faint. We don't have to doubt. We declare the word of God. The power is in our mouth. Now, I'm going to close with this because I'm running short of time. Oh, my God. We are in the month of Iyar in the Hebrew calendar. And the month of ER, it means plentiful, splendid, a gushing, a gushing, a gushing, a flow, a flow. That's the month that we're in in the Hebrew calendar. We're heading to Pentecost now. Understand this. We are in the year of 5780. That, that's the Hebrew. 5780, their year. That means the mouth. How are we going to persevere in prayer? We have to open our mouth and say the word. Not, oh, this is me. Oh, my God, why am I going through this? Why did it happen to me? Can I help you? And I'm telling you this in love. Those are wasted words. Those words have no power. But yet, in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, it talks about, uh, Jesus having power and we are joint heirs with him and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us and so we've got that dunamis power working on the inside in, 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 in God's word translation um, Isaiah the 11th chapter said advice and power advice and power that's what we have we're talking about elevating our prayer so when we understand what's in us, we come out of praying in the sense realm. And in other words, there are times you're going to have to pray in the sense realm. But that shouldn't be your primary realm of prayer. Somebody, you know, you see something that's not right, you out in the public, you begin to declare the word of God that the enemy will be exposed. And that that which is, but now, the, the most of our prayer time, our private time, that's what I'm talking about. We should be persevering in prayer. There should be prophetic prayer, which I'll go over next week. There should be uh, the promise prayer. There should be the somatic prayer. Those are the prayers. That's the realm we're in. Again, knowing the signs of the time, knowing what season we're in, how we're to operate. And so the way we're going to see what it is that God has promised us is we have to open our mouth and declare what God has said. Not what we think, not what somebody else think, but what God has said. What has God said? In order for me to know what God has said, I have to open up my word. I have to be willing to get with God. In closing, pulling away, I want to encourage you, and having prayer time with God. And we all have done this when the Holy Spirit will say, you know, quicken you and, and encourage you to get up or, you know, go pray or go read your word. And we've all had them, those flesh moments, those sense moments where we didn't want to get up and do it. But, but there, there is necessary that we be obedient. This morning, probably about, I think it was about 2.40, the Holy Spirit told me to get up and go pray. 
I came up and I began to pray and declare the word of God, declare the word of God, declare the word of God, and begin to do some warfare and uh, pray somatically, uh, pray persevering prayers, pray prophetically what the Holy Spirit was showing me. I was beginning to pray at things he was showing me that would, was going to happen in the future. I began to pray, and then I prayed the promises of God. Within the two-hour span of that time, I got a text. Didn't know who the text was from because their name wasn't in my phone. And I said, who in the world is this? The text that I got was a prayer request at about three something this morning. It just so happened. No, it didn't just so happen. It was the very thing that the spirit of God had me praying for before I got the text. He had me. That, that's prophetic prayers. He had me praying and declaring that. I just didn't know it was going to pertain to the person that, that texted me at three something in the morning with a prayer request. And so I'm sharing that with you to say that your prayers are not just for you. Hey, we're on assignment as people of God who pray. We like to label and say this is for the intercessors. All of us are intercessors. All of us are. And so how are we going to get change? How are we going to see change? How are we going to uh, make a difference? How are we going to see a difference? We'll see a difference spiritually before we should see them naturally, but it's going to come through our prayer life. It's going to come through us believing and declaring the word of God. And we must say what he said. Several hours later, I get a phone call. Another thing that I had prayed about, and persevering in warfare prayer. Somebody called and began to share that with me, that that had happened. What am I saying to you? Hey, church, we have got to step up our assignment. We got to step it up. And you know what? The power of God is in you, and you can do it. Get out of the sense realm. Our sense realm will trip us up. We'll get all in our feelings, and we'll get so far in our feelings that even in prayer, we're in prayer, and we're praying, from a sense realm. We're in prayer and ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit and we're praying from a sense realm. We're moving away from that. Amen. There's so much more that I have to share with you, but I got to stop. My time is up. I pray, I declare, and I decree that you've gotten something out of this on the our first night of um, uh, elevating our prayers. We're still a part of that kingdom authority, and, and this series is dealing with elevation. And elevation isn't about us being elevated. It's that God will do that. Psalm 75, he says that. You know, promotion comes not from the south, the east, or the west. It comes from God. He sits one down and raises another one up. So we don't have to promote ourselves. We just promote the kingdom. We promote what it, whatever it is God gave you to do. That's what you promote. And people may think, well, you well, he promoting himself. He promoting her. Wait, no, God gave you something to do so that people could see him through you because otherwise they would not recognize him if you weren't doing what you were doing. Don't let anybody talk you out of what God told you to do. Just do it with the leading of the Holy Spirit and do it with wisdom and do it with excellence. Amen. Father, I do thank you for those who are here tonight, who've heard the word. Ah, And I thank you, God, that we hide the word in our hearts. Yes, Lord. I declare and decree that we're moving out of the sense realm. That's not going to be our primary realm of prayer. Just as Isaiah 11 said that Jesus would not judge by what he sees and what he hears, we're not going to either. Because when we pass judgment, we miss opportunities to hear from God and we make decisions based on senses and selfishness and flesh and not based on the leading of the Holy Spirit. I declare and decree that we're mature in the Lord. I declare and decree that we will not faint. You will not faint. You will be strong in the Lord. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the report is. You will be strong in the Lord and you will confess God's word. And you will allow his word to be spoken out of your mouth louder than what you heard them say. 
you will allow his word to be spoken out of your mouth louder than what you are reading that's contrary to his word. You will allow the word of God to be spoken out of your mouth to, so that your spirit man is in full agreement with the word of God. And can I help you? In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that you will not take things that God has shown you and share with you and, you know, use it for bragging rights. God did this, God did this, and you won't be sharing it with people who are not capable of handling the anointing that's on your life. Everybody cannot handle the anointing that's on your life. Everybody is not going to understand what it is that God has called you to. You have to ask the Holy Spirit, who can you share it with and who can you show it with? Now I'm praying now for souls. And uh, I don't know, I cannot assume that everyone that will watch this uh, has given their life to the Lord. But I want to offer you Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, loving Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus died, was dead, buried, and resurrected for you. He died for all mankind. And all you have to do is repeat this prayer after me and just simply believe it in your heart and say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I do believe Jesus Christ was dead, buried, and resurrected for me. Lord, live in me that I may live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. If you've walked away from the Lord and uh, life's ebbs and flows have come in and you've stepped away, come on back. You don't even have to get in the back of the line. Just get back in line. Just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm returning back to you, my first love. Thank you for receiving me. I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, I want to encourage you. I know that we're not in churches right now, you know, for the most part. So, uh, listen, if you have a set place, be committed. Stay committed. If you knew the Lord told you that's where you're supposed to be, stay there. Amen. And support the vision that God has given to you in your set place. Amen. If you don't have a set place, hey, look, uh, we're streaming every Wednesday and every Sunday. And when we return back to the church, then we invite you to come back with us. Um, but most importantly, lean in and hear what it is that the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Praise God. Just a couple of real quick announcements. On tomorrow night, uh, the Men of Purpose will have their Zoom fellowship. Their Zoom fellowship. So uh, if you're interested in uh, brothers attending the uh, Men's Zoom fellowship, then you just text uh, M-O-V. No, Men of Purpose. M-O-P. <laughs> M-O-P. <laughs> Bishop just said, all right. MOP to 555-888. Text MOP to 555-888. And then tomorrow afternoon, you will have a link sent to you that you can use to sign in for the Men's Zoom Fellowship. Uh, you don't have to be a covenant partner of Refreshing Lives to be a part of that. Again, this coming Sunday, also from 1130 to 1230, from 1130 to 1230, if you're in need of some perishable and non-perishable items, uh, again, this is not just for the covenant partners. This is for anybody in the community. We will have another distribution this Sunday from 1130 to 1230. You don't have to get out of your car. You just drive up. They'll put it in your car. Uh, maybe you don't need anything, but maybe your neighbors do. No questions asked. 1130 to 1230. Just drive up to 212 Kale, K-A-L-E Road, our church, and then they'll just put it in your car. Amen. We are here to serve you in our community all right and then um <clears throat> the last thing is hey you have an opportunity to sow into the kingdom oh my god yes and if you desire to sow into the kingdom maybe you want to sow an offering because you're a member of a uh, uh, you're a covenant member or or uh, connected to another church you have your set place well we invite you to do so. Just simply go to your app store. If you don't have the app, Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, Givelify, download it and look for Refreshing Lives Church. And you can use that to give, Refreshing Lives Church. You can also use Cash App. Cash App, our handle is dollar sign, Refreshing Lives, one word. Amen. And of course, you can mail in your checks to Refreshing Lives Church, P.O. Box, 3005 
New Bern, North Carolina, 285-64-3005. Hello from Orlando. Thank you for watching, Angie. And blessings to you and the others that are in Orlando. Stay safe. Thank you again for watching. I'm going to declare a word of God over you as we go off. Father, I thank you for those that are watching in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree sweet sleep over them uninterrupted by any satanic force. I declare and decree that nothing or no one can step foot in their house or peer into it that has not been sent by you through your son Jesus with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I decree sweet sleep as is spoken in Psalm 3, and their sleep will not be interrupted by any satanic force. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, that as they turn during the night or they may wake up during the night, that they will give you praise, give you honor, and give you glory. It is the matchless and the mighty and the magnificent and the powerful name of Jesus. We do pray and give thanks. And all God's people give God some hearts in Jesus' name. Oh, Shonda's mother. God bless you, Angie. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, listen, y'all be blessed. Stay strong, stay in faith, and stay committed. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Good night.